Good morning, everyone. As we begin this morning's service, I invite you to join me in reciting the BUC Covenant. As part of this beloved BUC community, I promise to myself in my interaction. Assume the best intentions of everyone's actions. Be mindful of our shared humanity in my communications. Pause, reflect, and be part of the solution when things go awry. Thus do we covenant. <clears throat> Good morning, Birmingham Unitarian Church. Good morning. <laughs> that was great. Uh, my name is Claudia Coker, and with worship associate Sean Rooney, uh, we're leading the service this morning. It is good to be together again. Whether you are joining us here in the sanctuary, remotely via Zoom, or watching this recording later, it is good to connect with you. As a multi-platform church, it is important for us to build a bridge between the online and in-person participants. We call this connection opportunity greeting our virtual neighbors. First, we will project the image of folks who are currently on Zoom up here on our screen and ask them to turn their cameras on and give us a wave. Now, we who are gathered in person will turn to face the camera in the back of the sanctuary and give them a wave. Mm -hmm. If you are visiting us for the first time, welcome. We are glad you're here. 
If you are with us in the sanctuary, we invite you to join us for coffee and conversation in the social hall, <coughs> which is located to the left as you exit the sanctuary. If you are with us, if you are with us on Zoom, we invite you to stay on the call for a virtual coffee hour immediately after the service ends. Whenever and however we connect with BUC, we are building BUC at home or on campus. In the world, every day, we are Birmingham Unitarian Church and we are building a beloved community. Now, we join with other Unitarian Universalists around the world as we light our chalice. We gather this hour as people of faith, with joys and sorrows, gifts and needs. We light this beacon of hope, sign of our quest for truth and meaning in celebration of the life we share together. Now, please stand as you are able for hymn number six. Um, this is in the gray hymnal, Just As Long As I Have Breath. The words will also be on the screen. morning. My name is Sean Rooney and I will be leading the Sunday service today. The theme of today's service is the connection between the body and the spirit. Today's service will include an embodied spiritual practice around the whispered awe. Ah. It, it is primarily a breathing exercise to help relieve stress and make room for personal growth and awareness. The mission of Birmingham Unitarian Church is to be a free and welcoming religious community that encourages lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy. One way we live out this mission is by giving half of our weekly offering to a nonprofit organization that shares our values and addresses needs in one of these areas, environmental action, economic justice, 
civic engagement, and racial justice. We support a new organization each month. This month's plate collection recipient is the Michigan League of, League of Conservation Voters. The organization protects Michigan's air, land, and water by activating voters to elect and hold accountable, pu accountable public officials who fight for an environment that sustains the health and well-being of all. The impacts of climate change are intensifying and decades of disinvestment have resulted in certain communities disproportionately bearing the brunt of these impacts. By working together, we can reverse these disparities and ensure all Michiganders, regardless of income or zip code, have clean air to breathe, safe water to drink, and healthy communities. We will now take an offering. Let there be an offering in support of our beloved community and organizations that build the world we dream about. This morning's offering will now be received with gratitude. We are now at the point in our service where we offer up events or things in our life which give us joy or sorrow. This is an exercise as a community we take to celebrate or console. There are no online joys and sorrows this morning. Are there any sorrows or joys in the book? There are no written joys and sorrows this morning. However, there may be joys and sorrows in our heart that are too fresh or too difficult to share. Let us take a moment of silence to honor these joys and sorrows.
to bless the space between us from John O'Donohue. May the touch of your skin register the beauty of the otherness that surrounds you. May your listening be attuned to the deeper silence where sound is honed to bring distance home. May the fragrance of a breathing meadow refresh your heart and remind you, you are a child of the earth. And when you partake of food and drink, may your taste quicken to the gift and sweetness that flows from the earth. May your inner eye see through the surfaces and glean the real presence of everything that meets you. May your soul beautify the desire of your eyes that you might glimpse the infinity that hides in the simple sights that seem worn to your usual eyes. First reading from Thich Nhat Hanh, the book How to Sit. Flock of Birds. When you practice sitting with others, you don't have to do anything at all. The basic practice is to be there, to follow your breathing, and to experience the joy of being together. Imagine a flock of birds flying in the sky. Every bird has its own position, and each bird makes a contribution to the whole formation. They fly so smoothly together. Since each bird is part of this larger formation, they don't have to make a lot of effort. They benefit from the collective energy and don't need to work as hard. It's a pleasure to fly together like that in the sky. When we sit together, we are supported by each other. We each produce our true presence and offer that presence to each other. The second reading is titled Bone by Mary Oliver. Understand, I am always trying to figure out what the soul is and where hidden and what shape. And so last week, when I found on the beach the ear bone of a pilot whale that may have died hundreds of years ago, I thought maybe I was, just, I was close to discovering something. For the ear bone is the portion that lasts longest in any of us, man or whale, shaped like a squat spoon with a pink scoop where once in the lively swimmer's head it joined its two sisters in the house of hearing. It was only two inches long and thought, the soul might be like this, so hard, so necessary, yet almost nothing. Beside me, the gray sea was opening and shutting its wave doors, unfolding over and over its time-ridiculing roar. I looked but couldn't see anything through its dark-knit glare. Yet, don't we all know? The golden sand is there at the bottom, though our eyes can never have seen it, nor can our hands ever catch it, lest we would sift it down into fractions and facts, certainties. And what the soul is also, I believe, I will never quite know, though I play at the edges of knowing, 
Truly, I know our part is not knowing, but looking and touching and loving, which is the way I walked on softly through the pale pink morning light. Before I get started with the whispered awe, I would like to spend some time talking about the importance of the body when considering spiritual and emotional wellness. I was a sailor in the Navy serving on a submarine out of San Francisco during the Cold War through the 80s. I served with men who valued machines. Our submarine was full of mechanics, electricians, weapons specialists, and more specialties that, had to re that are required to keep a submarine afloat. And staying afloat was a very important part of life on the submarine. <laughs> we worked in cramped spaces, slept in small beds known as racks, and dined in crowded quarters known as the mess. The stresses of a submarine life are very real and often manifest in sailors' bodies. They develop muscle cramps in their backs and their shoulders. Their shoulders become burdened and rounded, and many of them gain lots of weight or lose weight. When we finally get back to our home port near San Francisco, I would recommend to many of my fellow sailors to take some time to get a massage, see a chiropractor, or simply do some stress-free exercise. Most of them would say the same thing. It'll get better over time. The muscle cramps and the sore muscles, they'll take care of themselves. I gained a real appreciation for body wellness and awareness while serving on that submarine. 
We all live with stress from many different sources during, during our very busy lives. And to deal with these stresses, many people use talk therapy for emotional health and church for spiritual awareness, both of which directly impact our bodies. I'm sure that many of you have left church after a particularly fulfilling service and have felt a lightness in your step or an ease in your breath or your shoulders. I have always been interested in body-centered approaches to help me with my life stresses. And with this focus, I have come to some emotional and spiritual awareness and wellness for myself. Today, I would like to share with you an embodied spiritual practice that may ease some of your body tension and in so doing, may lend itself towards a spiritual or an emotional insight. I'm going to introduce to you the whispered ah. This exercise is a breathing practice that will help release some tensions in your head, neck, and chest. And hopefully, you can find some relief from some of your life stresses. So I invite you to find a comfortable sitting position. It's nice and stable. And I invite you to allow the breath to come in through your nose and then out through your nose. And just become aware of the tip of your nose your nostrils as the air is allowed to come in on an exhale and out on an exhale. And with this next inhale, I invite you to allow the breath to come in and I want you to expand that awareness into your sinuses as the breath comes in through the nose, into the sinus, and the exhale goes out through the sinus, through the nose. And next I invite you, as you allow the next breath to come in on your inhale, to expand that awareness to the back of the throat. Be aware of the breath moving through your nose, through your sinus, into the back of your throat and then exhale with that same awareness through the nose. Next, I'm going to ask you to invite the breath to come in through the nose, through the sinus, through the, through the throat, and then expand your awareness into your lungs, your chest, your rib cage, and then just be aware of the same breath moving out through your nose. So next I invite you to allow the breath to come in with awareness through the nose, the sinus, the throat, into the lungs. And with this next exhale, I'd like you to part your lips and exhale through your mouth. Close your lips. Inhale through your nose with awareness. Part your lips and exhale through your parted lips. Allow the breath to come in with awareness. And on this next exhale through parted lips, I'd like you to create some space in the back of your teeth between the upper molars and the lower molars. Just create some space as the air exhales out, close the mouth. 
Allow the breath to come in with awareness. Out through parted lips. On this next breath, I invite you to take, to allow the breath to come in with awareness. And on the exhale, create an open, relaxed throat. Space between your teeth. Let your tongue relax. Parted lips and exhale. Close your lips. Allow the breath to come in with awareness. And then exhale with awareness through parted lips. On this next exhale, I want you to exhale with intention. I don't want you to make a noise. I just want you to think about making a noise. So exhale as if you were going to sing or whistle or hum. So I invite you to allow the breath to come in with awareness. Part your lips and exhale with intention. So this next exhale, we get to the ah. We choose the ah because that ah sound is the easiest sound for us to make. It's a nice, relaxing, easy sound. So as you exhale with this next exhale, I'd like you to create an ah sound as if to fog up a mirror or steam up a window. Now that you're in this lovely space, you don't have to ah on every exhale, every other, every third, every fourth, whatever's comfortable for you. I'm going to do a reading from John O'Donohue from the book, A Book of Celtic Wisdom. The body is the angel of the soul. The body, the human body, is beautiful. It is such a privilege to be embodied. You have a relationship to a place through the body. Yet, in the deepest sense, the body is the most intimate place. Your body is your clay home. Your body is the only home that you have in this universe. It is in and through your body that your soul becomes visible and real for you. Your body is the home of your soul on earth. There is a secret relationship between our physical being and the rhythm of our soul. The body is the place where the soul shows itself. The body is the angel who expresses and minds the soul. We should always pay attention, pay loving attention to our bodies. A primordial innocence surrounds the body. An incredible brightness and goodness. 
the body is the angel of the soul. Now with this newfound sense, release of tension in your throat, in your tongue, in your mouth, a newfound awareness of your breath, allowing the breath to come in and allowing the breath to go out. I invite you to sing this next hymn, number 1053 in the Teal Hymnal. How could anyone? And as you approach this song, we all know it. So don't think about singing it right. Don't think about the pitches being right. Just feel the new awareness that you have. Just sense the new use that you may have in singing this song. We'll go two times through. This is, we're obviously short. <laughs> so, as we extinguish our flame and leave our BUC sanctuary, consider these words from Thich Nhat Hanh, How to Walk. Walking is a celebration. When you walk, if you are aware that you are alive, that is already enlightenment. If you are aware that your feet are strong enough for you to enjoy walking, that is also enlightenment. When you breathe with awareness like that, you are celebrating life. Go now into this world as a beacon of hope and joy. Go in love. Go in peace. Now that our worship has ended, our service begins. May it be so. Amen. Blessed be. <laughs>